Beloved, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the church calls upon her daughters and sons, 
scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. So let us bow our heads as we pray our blessings on this fire. O oh God, who through your Son bestow upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire. And grant that by these Paschal celebrations, we may so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure, we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all times belong to him, and all the ages to him be glory and power through every age forever and ever. Amen. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds. May Christ the Lord guard us and protect us Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to light the Pascal candle now. Lower it, lower it. Lower, lower. Move it from your face. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and our minds. Amen. Amen. Pass it, 
pass on your light. Pass on your light. Christ our light and speak to God. Christ, Christ our light, and speak to God. Let's 
Jesus from the dead. This is the night of light and joy. The night has become clear as day. This is the night of love and true joy, of peace and reign of goodness. This is the night when Let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these, the last days, has sent us his son as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Let us be seated.
A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was a formless void. There was darkness over the deep, and God's spirit hovered over the water. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that light was good, and God divided light from darkness. God called light day, and darkness he called night. Evening came, and morning came, the first day. God said, let there be a vault in the waters to divide the waters in two. And so it was. God made the vault, and it divided the waters above the vault from the waters below the vault. God called the vault heaven. Evening came, and morning came, the second day. God said, let the waters under heaven come together into a single mass and let dry land appear. And so it was. God called the dry land earth and the mass of waters seas. And God saw that it was good. God said, let the earth produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and fruit trees bearing fruit with their seed inside on the earth. And so it was. The earth produced vegetation, plants bearing seed in their several kinds, and trees bearing fruit with their seed inside in their several kinds. God saw that it was good. Evening came and morning came, the third day. God said, let there be lights in the vault of heaven to divide day from night and let them indicate festivals, days and years. Let them be lights in the vault of heaven to shine on the earth. And so it was. God made the two great lights, the greater light to govern the day the smaller light to govern the night and the stars. God set them in the vault of heaven to shine on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to divide light from darkness. God saw that it was good. Evening came and morning came, the fourth day. God said, let the waters teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth within the vault of heaven. And so it was. God created great sea serpents and every kind of living creature with which the waters teem and every kind of winged creature. God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful multiply and fill the waters of the seas and let the birds multiply upon the earth. Evening came and morning came, the fifth day. God said, let the earth produce every kind of living creature, cattle, reptiles, and every kind of wild beast. And so it was. God made every kind of wild beast, every kind of cattle, and every kind of land reptile. God saw that it was good. God said, let us make man in our own image, in the likeness of ourselves, and let them be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of the heaven, the cattle, and all the wild beasts and all the reptiles that crawl upon the earth. God created man in the image of himself. 
In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and conquer it. Be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, and all living animals on the earth. God said, see, I give, all, I give you all the seed-bearing plants that are upon the whole earth, and all the trees with seed-bearing fruit. This shall be your food. To all wild beasts, all birds of heaven, and all living reptiles on the earth, I give all the foliage of plants for food. And so it was. God saw all that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. Evening came, and morning came, the sixth day. Thus, heaven and earth were completed with all their array. On the seventh day, God completed the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day, after all the work he had been doing. The word of the Lord. Send forth your spiritual Lord that the face of the earth be renewed. Send forth your spiritual Lord that the face of the Hills. 
From your dwelling you water the mountains Earth drinks its fill of your gift You make grass grow for cattle and plants for man Send forth your spirit, O Lord At the face of the Of your riches. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, that the face of the earth be renewed. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. Abraham, Abraham, he called. Here I am, he replied. Take your son, God said, your only child, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him as a burnt offering on a mountain I will point out to you. Rising early next morning, Abraham saddled his ass and took with him two of his servants and his son, Isaac. He chopped wood for the burnt offering and started on his journey to the place God had pointed out to him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Then Abraham said to his servants, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering, loaded it on Isaac and carried in his own hands the fire and the knife. Then the two of them set out together. Isaac spoke to his father, Abraham. Father, he said. Yes, my son, he replied. Look, he said. Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, My son, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. Then the two of them went on together. When they arrived at the place God had pointed out to him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood. Then he bound, I he bound his son Isaac 
and put him on the altar on top of the wood. Abraham stretched out his hand and seized the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, he said. I am here, he replied. Do not raise your hand against the boy, the angel said. Do not harm him, for now I know you fear God. You have not refused me, your son, your only son. Then, looking up, Abraham saw a ram caught by its horns in a bush. Abraham took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham called this place, the Lord provides. And hence the saying today, on the mountain, the Lord provides. The angel of the Lord called Abraham a second time from heaven. I swear by my own self, it is the Lord who speaks. Because you have done this, because you have not refused me your son, your only son, I will shower blessings upon you. I will make your descendants as many as the stars of heaven and the grains of sand on the seashore. Your descendants shall gain possession of the gates of their enemies. All the nations of the earth shall bless themselves by your descendants as a reward for your obedience. The word of the Lord. take refuge in you. Preserve me, God, I take refuge in you. O oh Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. It is you yourself who are my pride. I keep the Lord ever in my sight Since he is at my right hand I shall stand firm Preserve me, God I take refuge in you And so my heart rejoices my soul is glad, even my body shall rest in safety, for you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let your beloved no decay. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand, happiness forever. Let us pray. O oh God, the Supreme Father of the faithful, who increased the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, 
and who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham father of nations as once you soar. Grant that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me so? Tell the sons of Israel to march on. For yourself, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and part it for the sons of Israel to walk through the sea on dry ground. I, for my part, will make the heart of the Egyptians so stubborn that they will follow them. I shall win myself glory at the expense of Pharaoh, for all his army, his chariots, his horsemen. And when I have won glory for myself at the expense of Pharaoh and his chariots and his army, the Egyptians will learn that I am the Lord. Then the angel of the Lord, who marched at the front of the army of Israel, changed station and moved to their rear. The pillar of cloud changed station from the front to the rear of them and remained there. It came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. The cloud was dark and the night passed without the armies drawing any closer the whole night long. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove back the sea with a strong easterly wind all night, and he made dry land of the sea. The waters parted, and the sons of Israel went on dry ground right into the sea, walls of water to right and to left of them. The Egyptians gave chase. After them they went right into the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. In the morning watch, the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians from the pillar of fire and of cloud and threw the army into confusion. He so clogged their chariot wheels that they would scarcely make headway. Let us flee from the Israelites, the Egyptians cried. The Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Stretch out your hand over the sea, the Lord said to Moses, and the waters may flow back on the Egyptians and their chariots and their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and as they broke, the sea returned to its bed. The fleeing Egyptians marched right into it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the very middle of the sea. The returning waters overwhelmed the chariots and the horsemen of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them was left. But the sons of Israel had marched through the sea on dry ground, walls of water to right and to left of them. That day, the Lord rescued Israel from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. Israel witnessed the great act that the Lord had performed against the Egyptians, and the people venerated the Lord. They put their faith in the Lord and in Moses, his servant. It was then that Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song in honor of the Lord. The word of the Lord. I will sing to the Lord. Glorious his triumph, horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph, horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. 
The Lord is my strength, my song, my salvation. This is my God, and I extol Him. My Father's God, and I will give Him praise. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is His name. I will sing to the Lord. The chariots of Pharaoh he hurled into the sea. The flower of his army is drowned in the sea. The deeps hide them, they sank like a stone. I will sing to the Lord. in its power. Your right hand, Lord, has shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your glory, you crush the foe. I will sing to the Lord, glorious is triumph, awesome rider, he has thrown into the sea. You will lead your people, plant them on your mountain, the place, O oh Lord, where you have made your home. The sanctuary, Lord, which your hands have made. The Lord will reign forever and ever. I will sing to the Lord, glorious is triumph. Horse and rider, he has thrown into the sea. O oh God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, now your creator will be your husband, his name the Lord of hosts. Your redeemer will be the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. Yes, like a forsaken wife, distressed in spirit, the Lord calls you back. Does a man cast off the wife of his youth, says your God? I did forsake you for a brief moment, but with great love will I take you back. In excess of anger for a moment, I hid my face from you. But with everlasting love, I have taken pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. I am now as I was in the days of Noah, when I swore that Noah's waters should never flood the world again. So now I swear concerning my anger with you and the threats I made against you. For the mountains may depart, the hills be shaken, but my love for you will never leave you and my covenant of peace with you will never be shaken, says the Lord who takes pity on you. Unhappy creature, storm-tossed, disconsolate, see, I will set your stones on carbuncles and your foundations on sapphires. I will make rubies your battlements, your gates crystal, 
and your entire wall precious stones. Your sons will all be taught by the Lord. The prosperity of your sons will be great. You will be founded on integrity. Remote from oppression, you will have nothing to fear. Remote from terror, it will not approach you. The word of the Lord. My enemies rejoice over me. O oh Lord, you have raised my soul from the dead, restored me to life from those who sink into the grave. Psalms to the Lord, you who love him. Give thanks to his holy name. His anger lasts but a moment, his favor through life. At night there are tears, but joy comes with dawn. listened and had pity the Lord came to my help for me you have changed my mourning into dancing O oh Lord my God I will thank you forever Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you pledge to the patriarchs by reason of their faith and through sacred adoption increase the children of your promise so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass, your church may now see in great part fulfilled through Christ our Lord. Amen. reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, O oh, come to the water, all you who are thirsty. Though you have no money, come. Buy corn without money and eat, and at no cost, wine and milk. Why spend money on what is not bread, your wages on what fails to satisfy? Listen, listen to me and you will have good things to eat and rich food to enjoy. Pay attention, come to me, listen, and your soul will live. With you I will make an everlasting covenant, 
out of the favors promised to David. See, I have made of you a witness to the peoples, a leader and a master of the nations. See, you will summon a nation you never knew. Those unknown will come hurrying to you for the sake of the Lord your God, of the Holy One of Israel, who will glorify you. Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Let the wicked man abandon his way, the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn back to the Lord who will take pity on him, to our God who is rich in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways not your ways. It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, the heavens are as high above earth as my ways are above your ways, my thoughts above your thoughts. Yes, as the rain and the snow come down from the heavens and do not return without watering the earth, making it yield and giving growth to provide seed for the sower and bread for the eating, so the word that goes from my mouth does not return to me empty without carrying out my will and succeeding in what it was sent to do. The word of the Lord. From the wells of salvation With joy you will draw water From the wells of salvation Truly God is my salvation I trust I shall not fail for the Lord is my strength, my song. He became my savior. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Give praise to his name, make his mighty deeds known to the peoples, declare the greatness of his name. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Sing a psalm to the for he has done glorious deeds Make them known to all the earth People of Zion, sing and shout for joy For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel With joy you will draw Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. 
through Christ our Lord. reading from the prophet Baruch. Listen, Israel, to commands that bring life. Hear and learn what knowledge means. Why, Israel, why are you in the country of your enemies, growing older and older in an alien land, sharing defilement with the dead, reckoned with those who go to Sheol? because you have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Had you walked in the way of God, you would have lived in peace forever. Learn where knowledge is, where strength, where understanding, and so learn where length of days is, where life, where the light of the eyes, and where peace. But who has found out where she lives? Who has entered her treasure house? But the one who knows all knows her. He has grasped her with his own intellect. He has set the earth firm forever and filled it with four-footed beasts. He sends the light and it goes. He recalls it and trembling it obeys. The stars shine joyfully at their set times. When he calls them, they answer, here we are. They gladly shine for their creator. It is he who is our God. No other can compare with him. He has grasped the whole way of knowledge and confided it to his servant, Jacob. To Israel, his well-beloved, so causing her to appear on earth and move among men. This is the book of the commandments of God, the law that stands forever. Those who keep her live, those who desert her die. Turn back, Jacob, seize her. In her radiance, make your way to light. Do not yield your glory to another your privilege to a people not your own. Israel, blessed are we. What pleases God has been revealed to us. The word of the Lord. more 
to be desired than gold, than the purest of gold, and sweeter are they than honey, than honey from the cold. Let us pray. O oh God, who constantly increase your church by your call to the nations, graciously grant to those who wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. Son of man, the members of the house of Israel used to live in their own land, but they defiled it by their conduct and actions. I then discharged my fury at them because of the blood they shared in their land and the idols with which they defiled it. I scattered them among the nations and dispersed them in foreign countries. I sentenced them as their conduct and actions deserved. And now, they have profaned my holy name among the nations where they have gone. So that people say of them, these are the people of the Lord. They have been exiled from the land. But I have been concerned about my holy name, which the house of Israel has profaned among the nations where they have gone. And so, say to the house of Israel, the Lord says this, I am not doing this for my sake, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you have gone. I mean to display the holiness of my great name, <clears throat> which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned among them. And the nations will learn that I am the Lord. It is the Lord who speaks when I display my holiness for your sake, because before their eyes. Then I'm going to take you from among the nations and gather you together from all the foreign countries and bring you home to your own land. I shall pour clean water over you and you will be cleansed. I shall cleanse you of all your defilement and all your idols. I shall give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I shall remove the heart of stone from your bodies and give you a heart of flesh instead. I shall put my spirit in you and make you keep my laws and sincerely respect my observances. You will live in the land which I gave your ancestors. You shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God. The God of my life When can I enter and see The face of God Like the dead That yearns for running streams So my soul is yearning For you my God these things will I remember as I pour out my soul How I would lead the rejoicing crowd into the house of God Amid the cries of gladness and thanksgiving The throng wild with joy Like the dead that hears for Send forth your light and your truth Let these be my guide Let them bring me to your holy mountain To the place where you dwell Like the dead that yearns for running streams So my soul is yearning for you And I will come to the altar of God, the God of my joy. My Redeemer, I will thank you on the heart, O oh God, my God. Like the dead that yearns for running streams, so my soul is Let us pray. O God, who by the pages of both testaments instruct and prepare us to celebrate the Paschal mystery, grant that we may comprehend your mercy so that the gifts we receive from you this night may confirm our hope of the gifts to come through Christ our Lord.
us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that, renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized in his death. In other words, when we were baptized, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. If in union with Christ, we have imitated his death, we shall also imitate him in his resurrection. We must realize that our former selves have been crucified with him to destroy this sinful body and to free us from the slavery of sin. When a man dies, of course, he has finished with sin. But we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. When he died, he died once for all to sin, so his life now is life with God. And in that way, you too must consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Hallelujah. 
to the Lord for he is good for his love has no end let the sons of Israel say his love has no end has triumphed his right hand raised me up I shall not die I shall live and recount his deeds rejected has become the cornerstone this is the work of the Lord a marvel in our eyes Beloved, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices with which to go and anoint him. And very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb just as the sun was rising. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked, they could see that the stone, which was very big, had already been rolled back. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe seated on the right hand side, and they were struck with amazement. But he said to them, there is no need for alarm. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See, here is the place where they laid him. But you must go and tell his disciples and Peter, he's going before you to Galilee. It is there you will see him just as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise he has risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. I am struck by the verse in Mark's Gospel just proclaimed in which Mark says, on entering the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe, and he said to them, he has risen. On entering the tomb. Do you know, beloved, the tomb is a space for burial. A tomb is a confined space that triggers claustrophobia for the living. A tomb is that dark, daunting, dreary space. A tomb is that space for those who are metaphorically or literally dead. 
human life, beloved in Christ, also consists of tomb experiences in which the psalmist describes as the valley, walking in the valley of the shadow of death. And so the painful suffering and death of Jesus of Nazareth was a spiritually and emotionally and literally a tomb experience. This tomb experience impacted Jesus so much, so heavily, that he bawled out on the cross, as we heard in yesterday's liturgy. He bawled out on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At the beginning of Holy Week, I presented you with the faith model of an unnamed woman who used her dowry of an alabaster jar of perfume. And what did she do? She poured it on Jesus' head in order to prepare him for his tomb experience. And this unnamed woman, beloved, she passed on the baton of her lived faith to several persons whom we encountered in the scripture readings during the tritium. For example, the women disciples, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and John, they offered their alabaster jar, as you saw and heard about yesterday at the Good Friday liturgy, they offered their alabaster jar of silent presence at the foot of the cross. And Simon of Cyrene, he offered his alabaster jar of the stewardship of his time and talent as he helped Jesus to carry his cross. And Jesus himself, as you heard on Holy Thursday, offered the, disciple, the disciples his alabaster jar of the Eucharist and, and service. And as we heard on Holy Thursday, what is the purpose of these alabaster jar? Simply put, beloved, it served the purpose to sustain Jesus' faith, to sustain Jesus' trust in a faithful God, a faithful Father in his tomb experience, readying him for the resurrection. So as with the start of Holy Week, where we had a woman's faith as a guide, guess what? At the end of the tridium, we also have women's faith. I'm not, I'm not hearing amen. amen. <laughs> and we have the women's faith of Mary of Magdala and Mary the mother of James and Salome. These women, beloved in Christ, convicted of the, they are convicted and convinced of the transformative power of their alabaster jar of anointing and presence, that these women return to the tomb early in the morning on the first day of the, the week. Beloved, their faith drives them to disobedience, drives them to take the risk, to risk their lives to disobey the Jewish authority to go to the tomb of Jesus of Nazareth. And seeing the stone rolled away, what did they do? Did they flee? Did they go back? No, what did they do? They entered the tomb. Notwithstanding their grief, they entered the space that triggers painful memories of Jesus' suffering and death. They enter the space knowing they risk being arrested. They enter the space because they were women of faith who believe that death cannot be the final chapter of this man's life. Amen. And on entering the tomb, they encountered a young man who announced to them, Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, he has risen. Beloved, these women, their faith informed them immediately 
what this announcement of Jesus' resurrection means. In the resurrection, the earthly body of Jesus is transformed to a new realm where it is totally permeated by the Holy Spirit. You see, beloved, in his earthly life, Jesus' body was trapped in the tomb of time and space with the limitations in his ability to communicate and contact with those who were within the tomb of space and time. After the resurrection, the risen Jesus can now communicate and contact people and circumstances beyond the tomb of time and space. Amen. He's no longer trapped in the tomb of time and space. Consequently, during the next 50 days of Easter, you will be hearing the readings of what is referred to as the appearance narratives, the appearance story of the risen Jesus, who is no longer constrained by the tomb of space and time. In the end, beloved, the offering of the alabaster jar of the unnamed woman, the women disciples, John, Simon of Cyrene, the women of Jerusalem, were not in vain. They prepared Jesus for his tomb. And guess what? God raised him from his tomb. How, beloved, how is it challenging us today? I'd like you to make note of this, because you'll be hearing these stories, the appearance stories over these 50 days. And what you will see in these stories is at the heart of these stories is the risen Jesus intentionally appears to the disciples in their tomb experiences. Whether it's them being locked away in the room for fear of the Jews, or whether it's the two disciples on the road to Emmaus abandoning the community and abandoning the mission, or whether it's the frustration of fishing all night without a decent catch, or whether it's Mary Magdalene in her grief and sorrow and mistake Jesus for the gardener. At the heart of these narratives, is Jesus, the risen Jesus, appearing to these disciples in their tomb experiences. And what is this message for us today? First, beloved, the risen Jesus comes to us now, today in the 21st century, Today in the 21st century, in Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean, he comes to us in different ways. He comes to us through the scriptures. He comes to us through the Eucharist and the sacraments. He comes to us through the community. He comes to us through prayer. He comes to us in meeting strangers and strangers. And so you and I must now develop the ability to discern the presence of the risen Christ. That's the challenge that faces us. To discern that ability. And come to recognize, beloved, that he's not the gardener, but he comes to us through the gardener. To recognize that he's not the person you and I like and you and I dislike and hate or prejudice, but he comes through them. That's the challenge of the synod. That is the challenge of the synod. The risen Christ now appears to us in our raw, concrete circumstances of life, and you and I must develop the gifts of discerning that presence, his presence. Second, beloved, the risen Jesus calls disciples, you and I, mothers, fathers, parents, single men and women, calls disciples to mission, 
to go into the heart of the tombs of people's lives. Why? The answer, beloved, rests in the insight of the young man whom the woman encountered in the tomb. What did he say to them? He is going before you. Where? In Galilee. Beloved, before you and I enter the tombs of people's lives, or even the tombs of our lives, the risen Jesus is already there. He's already there. Sadly, beloved, in Christ in many places, Christianity has become a safe and secure religion. We go only to those spaces and places we consider safe. Beloved, if disciples do not mission in the tombs of people's lives, in the tomb of society's life, in the tomb of a nation life, nation's life, then who will? Who will? And therefore, my Easter dream is of a church that will return to the spirit, the church of the spirit of the first century, a church that is courageous, a church that takes risk, a church that is brave. That's my Easter dream. <coughs> Beloved, the church goes to unsafe spaces because the risen Christ is already there. In addition, beloved, we go to those unsafe and insecure spaces standing on the faith shoulders of the church's martyrs and saints, amen? There is a movie that I invite all of you to view, or if you have seen it already, to watch it again during this Easter season. It's called Of Gods and Men, a 2010 movie under the threat by fundamentalist terrorists, a group of Trappist monks stationed in Algeria, Northern Africa, must decide whether to stay or to leave. I invite you to watch that movie. In closing, I leave with you once again the insightful words of Joseph Campbell that captures the Easter message. Campbell says, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. I'd like to twist it a bit and saying, the tombs you fear entering holds the risen Jesus you seek. Beloved, every morning when you and I wake, I invite you to begin the day with a deep awareness that there will be many tombs, that there are many tombs, personal and otherwise, awaiting you to enter. At work, at school, in your neighborhood, in your family, anywhere. I invite all of us to pray for the grace of awareness, to believe that the risen Jesus has already gone ahead of us into those tombs. And all is that we are invited to do is go with faith, go with the faith that of these women, go in faith into these tombs. It is there that we will experience and encounter the risen Jesus. And when we encounter him, then our hearts and minds will be moved to sing, Alleluia, Alleluia, indeed he is risen.
And now let us stand, beloved, in Christ as we move into the blessing of the water, the renewal of our baptismal promises. Beloved, let us humbly invoke upon this, this fund the grace of God, the Almighty Father, that those who from it are born anew may be numbered among the children of adoption in Christ. by visible, invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance, substance of water would even, would even then take itself to itself the power of to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and the beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people to be baptized. O God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit and, as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, Go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church, and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old may be found worthy to rise to the life of new birth, newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ in baptism into death may rise again to life with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
Bird birth. We have put on Christ Jesus. before you made your baptismal promises, but that is fine. Let us uh, make our baptismal promises as I ask you. Do you believe in God the Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe, sorry. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author of and the prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, bestow on us forgiveness of sin in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us be seated as we prepare for the liturgy of the Eucharist.
Pray, beloved, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God and the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is a true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, Every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, at the fund of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take this, all of you, and a drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humble we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all your martyrs and saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we there to say. us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should answer under my roof, but only say a word and my soul shall be healed.
the table of the Lord is laden with all that you and I need for our journey. He invites all who hunger and thirst to his table of plenty. And even though you cannot be physically here, still come and receive from our Lord in a spiritual way. Let us pray together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. O Divine Savior, O Jesus, O Blessed Sacrament.
among you who goes out before you alive. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He's alive. He's alive. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal sacrament one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. He is risen from the dead. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise God. Thank you very much, Father, and thank you for that journey that we made this week. Thank you very much. You have really helped us on this time. Praise God. And I know I speak too for many people who are li listening and joining us through the media. Thank you. And thank you, Lord, for our beautiful choir, really would. <laughs> Helping us through this time so beautifully. Thank you, thank you. And thanks to all who have participated, all of you who have come, those of who joined us through the media for this triduum. Thank you, thank you, thank you. To our readers, we thank you. Praise God. To all those who serve at the altar, we thank you. Greg, we thank you tonight. In this. Praise God. And we thank Derek for this beautiful decorations, a beautiful all. And of course, for Marjorie and Alan, we could never do it without them. 
Amen. Praise the Lord from Virgin Islands. And a thanks to the Lord for a beautiful evening, a beautiful night. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Praise God. So as we are leaving, we have excitement at the door because we have Catholic news and plenty. So you better take one in for your neighbor and everybody else. It's Easter. So give away Easter presents. We have a little card with a beautiful prayer for your Easter. And I think you might get a chocolate if you're leaving. If you're good, if you've been good, you might get a chocolate. We have a collection this weekend, a collection for the priests of the Archdiocese. So we ask you, thank you for your contribution so far. And we ask you to continue the baskets at the door as you are leaving. So celebrate, enjoy. And for those of you who come back tomorrow, 8.30 in the morning, the Mass of the Resurrection. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And tomorrow evening, we have evening prayer at 6 o'clock on Zoom. So all can join us for that as well. So thank you, thank you, and thanks be to God. Go home, be good, be nice to one another, celebrate Easter, celebrate God's tremendous love, and don't be afraid. He has gone before us already. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, and enjoy your dinner. The Lord be with you. Now bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten son endow you with the prize of immortality. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you now and forever. Our celebration ends. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And one more. What about Trinity? Give them a big <laughs> special for Trinity. Ready to put in a lot of work during these days. Thank you, TCN. Thank you, Trinity. God bless.